A permission set in Salesforce is a collection of settings and permissions that give users additional access on top of the profile that they already have. A great example of this is if you have a team of sales reps. They all use the same sales reps profile, but one of the sales reps is actually the team lead. So they need exactly the same access as the sales reps with the addition of being able to delete leads and opportunities. None of the other sales reps can do that, only the team lead. So should we just create a brand new profile just for that sales team lead? No, no way. <laughs> Instead, we can use a permission set to extend or to give additional access on top of the sales rep profile that they already have. Any setting that you can give in a profile, you can also give in a permission set. This includes all the object and field level access, but also password policies, login settings, and access to the setup menu. Personally, I like to think of permission sets a lot like Santa. They're always giving more. They're very giving sort of things. They're giving more access, they're never taking away access. You can't ever use a permission set to restrict access in Salesforce, only to allow users to see more things or to do more things. Permission sets can be built on top of each other as well. So one user might only have the one profile, but they might have three or four different permission sets. And that's totally fine. Just like we can have standard or custom profiles, we can also have standard and custom permission sets. Standard permission sets are pre-built in Salesforce and do require users to have the appropriate permission set license in order to use them but custom permission sets are ones that we create ourselves. Remember that anything in Salesforce that's custom just means that you've created it yourself. These are super useful for giving that little extra bit of access to a user on top of their existing profile. Now, how do we actually create a new permission set? Well, it's really easy. <laughs> you can create one from scratch, just like you would with a profile, or if you like, you can clone an existing permission set and then use that as a base and build or take away from there. As well as the standard and custom permission sets, there are three other types that we need to be aware of. The first permission set is called an integration permission set. Integration permission sets are for giving other platforms, so not really humans, but other tech platforms that integrate with Salesforce access to that appropriate data. This will often be an accounting software like Xero or maybe a marketing platform like MailChimp or Marketo. The second type of permission set that we need to be aware of is the managed permission set. These are installed from a managed package, like one from AppExchange, and has the same name as the package, so it keeps it nice and easy. These managed permission sets will include all the access that that package needs to function in your Salesforce org. We call these managed because they're managed by the people who created the package or who created that app on app exchange, not by us locally. We didn't create those permission sets ourselves. A third type of permission set here is the session-based permission set. Session-based permission sets allow access only during a certain user session. Now, user session is just a period of time that a user is logged in. For example, we might create a session-based permission set that allows users to edit their timesheet in Salesforce, but they can only do this in the last week of every month. Outside of that time, they actually don't have the correct permissions to edit it at all. We're giving and taking away permissions based on a session or a time block. We assign permission sets directly to the user and can see this on the user account page or by clicking on the manage assignments button directly from the permission set page itself. If you find that you're giving your users a whole heap of different permission sets, it might be time to look at grouping them together with a permission set group. Permission set groups are exactly what they sound like. They're just groups of different permission sets that we're bundling together. So instead of having to assign a new user these six different permission sets, we can just bundle all of those together in one permission set group and then just add that one group. Nice and easy all done. A really great example of this is having a bunch of independent permission sets that give different access to the setup menu. One permission might give the access to reset passwords. 
Another one might give the ability to update a profile. Maybe a third permission set will allow people to deactivate users. You can bundle all these together into a permission set group that you might call admin permissions so that you can assign them quickly if need be. But you can also assign them separately if you just want users to have one of those permission sets, but not all of them at once.